Johann Sebastian Bach was one of the greatest composers in the history of music, lying the foundation for all of Western music following him. He was a turning point in music history, marking the height and end of the Baroque era. His works were both revolutionary and unconventional. For this, Glenn Gould, a four-time Grammy winner, called him the greatest nonconformist in the history of music. For Wagner, he was the most stupendous miracle in all of music. The music of Johann Sebastian Bach reached a height of complexity that no other composer has since then reached. He is considered the foundation of Western music, and for such, his influence can be seen from Mozart to Stravinsky. Beethoven called him the mortal god of harmony. The Bach remained largely unknown to the public until around a hundred years after his death. He was known then only to a small group of connoisseurs and composers. Mozart and Beethoven happened to be of that group. Born in Eisenach on the 21st of March, 1686, Bach belonged to a long line of German court composers and musicians. His father, Johann Ambrosius Bach, was the director of music for the town, and had given it Bach his very first music lessons. His childhood was one filled with both music and devastating losses. These early losses would greatly influence Bach. Both of his parents were dead by the time he was ten, something that pushed Bach to be more religious, later being heavily affected by the Lutheran faith. In fact, Johann Sebastian Bach went to the same school that Martin Luther once did. Parentless, Bach lived with his older brother Johann Christoph Bach, who taught him how to play the organ. At 15, Bach needed to find a new home. There simply was no more room in his brother's house for Bach. The young Bach then obtained a singing scholarship for St. Michael's School in Lüneburg, which was 200 miles north. There, he received a fine musical education. Once, while testing a new organ for the new church in Onstadt, he was offered the prestigious job of organist on the spot. The Bach was rebellious and would, much to his employer's distaste, improvise on the pieces he was told to play. He had once gotten into a street fight with a bassoonist, who he said played like a goat, angering his employers even more. Bach had once asked for a month's leave of absence to travel 260 miles to watch his idol, Dukestad Buxtehude, perform on the organ. He stayed far too long, a full four months, infuriating his employers even more. He later left finding employment at the imperial free city of Muehausen, where he had the financial stability to marry his second cousin, Marie. After this, Bach moved again, disappointed with the conditions of his former job. He now worked for the court at Weimar. Bach then sought to leave for another employment opportunity, but the Duke was so reluctant to have Bach leave, they placed him under house arrest. After a month of house arrest, Bach left for the Kurthen court. During this time, he gained many new and important influences. Bach encountered French works, German works, but it was from his influence by Italian composers that he learned drama. Bach transcribed many of Vivaldi's violin concertos for organ solo, becoming very involved with the music. It was here that Bach composed mainly secular works, something that was very modern, just to compose for the sake of music. The Prince of Cothan also spent a lot of time with music and would often join in playing with an ensemble. The Brandenburg concertos, cello suites, violin concertos, and sonatas, and many other secular works were composed in Kothan. The works for harpsichord were virtuosic, complex, emotional, influencing basically all composers from Mozart on. Once, while away at a spa with the Prince of Kothan, Bach's wife had died. The news only reached him when he walked into his own house. 
Then, he decided to compose the Giacona, an epic 14-minute long piece for solo violin that goes through every range of human emotion, a piece that is considered the pinnacle of all violin music. Johannes Brahms, arguably the greatest composer of the 19th century, in a letter to Clara Schumann, the wife of Robert Schumann, said, On one staff, for a small instrument, the man writes a whole world of the deepest thoughts and most powerful feelings. If I imagine that I could have created or even conceived the piece, I am quite certain that the excess of excitement and earth-shattering experience would have driven me out of my mind. Bob, a year after his wife's death, with seven motherless kids, remarried a singer, Anna Magdalena Bach, who played an important role musically on the composer. Together, they had 13 other kids. One of them was the famous composer Johann Christian Bach, or the English Bach. Bach didn't want to leave Kothan, but the prince's new wife didn't care for his involvement in music and the prince was needed politically. Seeing this, Bach reluctantly left for a position at Leipzig, where he would remain for the rest of his life. He was the music director for basically the whole city, supplying the two largest churches with music. This resulted in 250 substantial works for voices. Some of these works were based off the hymns Martin Luther wrote. While under Leipzig's employment, Bach took a trip to visit Frederick the Great, whom greatly appreciated music, playing on Frederick's forte piano, a predecessor to the modern piano. He even once was asked to write a cantata about coffee for the city's coffee shop. At this time, the harpsichord underwent something called well-tempered tuning. For the first time ever, it was possible on the harpsichord to play in every major and minor key. In response to this new tuning, Bach wrote what is considered to be the Old Testament of music. Johann Sebastian Bach wrote the well-tempered clavier, a prelude and fugue in every major or minor key. This was a monumental task that had never been done before. Not only had a task like this never been done before, but after the first book, Bach wrote another well-tempered clavier. This work has been something that all great composers have referred to. Mozart, Beethoven, Schubert, Mendelssohn, Schumann, and Brahms would play this music every day and were deeply involved with it. The prelude was often a more linear composition, while the fugue could be more contrapuntal. This made the well-tempered clavier similar to a composer's instruction manual. These forms, Bach did many things that were very baroque, the type of work is structured like a poem, with rules and patterns. Bach used many of these forms like the toccata, chacona, fugue, aria, saraban, alamant, while also doing something very modern. Bach didn't follow the new styles and chose styles that were very revolutionary and unique, while still following the rules in Baroque forms. When he wrote his last fugue, The Art of Fugue, Fugues were enormously unpopular. Even so, this work brought the form to a height never matched. On the last fugue of the work, Bach uses his own name as the fugue subject. B A C H. B is B flat in German, and H is B natural. During this unusually long fugue, the line of the pen is broken, and mid phrase, the piece ends. It is at this moment that Bach's son, Johann Christian Bach, says Bach died. At the age of 65, Johann Sebastian Bach left over a thousand works of music and a legacy unequaled, representing an era while also moving beyond that era. He himself was a turning point that affected all the following eras of music as we know them. This immortal god of harmony as Beethoven called him, has been listened to for 300 years and will forever represent the turning point of an era and be the height of structured music.